Hello everyone and welcome back to our last tutorial video. I'm so excited. Um, I know this part of the tutorial right here, just this small clip, I did not realize I was way off frame. But it's okay because we're doing something that we've already done before. But I want I want to let you know what I'm doing. So you guys remember that color mix that there's like a thousand colors to create this mix. I'm exaggerating. There's not a thousand colors, but I believe there's like about seven or eight colors. And I told you guys this is what I use for my Evangeline's lips. This is what I use for creasing when it comes to my Caucasian babies. And uh, right now offhand, I, I cannot remember what else we used it for, for Evangeline, since it's been a while since I created those tutorial videos. But we are going to use it to re-blush the baby. We wanna get rid of those pinkish, reddish tones. We use those as a way of mapping what we're doing what we're going to be blushing but this is going to be the actual color now the other blushing color was not a waste of time it is a way of building up color but now we're going to add this color on top of my our rosy tones and it's going to give it a beautiful ma not magenta but purpley blushy look so so um i'll explain more when we get to the other limb but again we are blushing everything that we've blushed before with this beautiful color. I'm also applying this color around the creases. You guys just saw that a little bit uh, on that limb. And what I'm doing there is just creating depth. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just simply creating depth with this color. And you guys can also see that color at the very, very bottom, that burgundy color that's peaking right at the bottom of the screen. That is a color that I'm using. And as you can tell, it's fairly thick, but you do wanna be careful because you don't want to apply a very bright color onto your baby. So as I'm applying, I do show the limb on screen so you guys can see what that color application looks like. And as you guys can see right here, I do this very random mark on the doll. And it's not very, very random. It's just creating this sort of a blushing effect on the skin. Just a little small blushing effect. Nothing simple, just a little swirly circle and then I just blended it out. Um, I tend to do that a lot on the limbs just to create a little bit of blushing throughout the limb so it doesn't look so blah so that doesn't look like there's only blushing on the creasing does that make sense so it makes it a little bit more uniform more mm, I think it definitely helps with realism here you guys are going to see another blushing spot that I do behind the arm or on the back side of the arm and again it's the same thing to help to add depth add realism add more color to the baby I'm going to do a couple more of those blushing spots that I was talking to you guys about very 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 important for our baby and for the end result so it's very not random spots but just a couple of areas that feel like they could use a little bit of this color i hope that makes sense um definitely with you guys seeing how i apply these spots you will definitely get an idea of how to go about and doing it yourself So here you guys get to see a little bit of that blushing that I do on the wrist here. But again, I'm, I'm majorly trying to get those creases. 
and give them depth. It's not that I felt like I had to blush the wrist. It's that this wrist had creases in the area and I felt like I could use a little bit of depth by applying this color. Now, for the next few seconds, we do get on frame with this limb and you guys will see the finishing steps of this arm. And not only that, you guys will get to see, are seeing what work I have done on this arm, what that work looks like. And now you're just seeing me, I got a little bit of paint within the finger, so I'm just cleaning that up. And um, yeah, I, I, let me know what you guys think. I absolutely love this color. So I am completely done blushing this arm. Now the next arm you will blush in the same fashion. I unfortunately do not show that, but I will show you guys next how I blushed the legs. So we're going to start off by adding some of this color near the toes so the creasing near the toes and i'm going to use my sponge here to absorb most of the color but to also blend the color that stays on the limb then i'm going to add more color and continue blending Once I am done blushing this area, I'm going to blush the knee and the thigh in the same fashion that you guys saw how I did the arm. And I'm also going to apply those little blushing areas throughout the leg. Unfortunately, I did not show this and I do remember why. It was because it was getting a little difficult to continue recording with my phone because it kept, around this time was when my phone kept dying on me and I can't remember what other things happen. So I am explaining to you guys exactly what happens with this leg. 
Now, as I am playing this replay, I do want to explain a couple of things. So when you guys blush the next leg, you're going to do it in the exact same fashion as we did this leg. When you guys blush the other arm, definitely do it in the same fashion. There's nothing mysterious, so don't feel scared. We're simply blushing our fingers. We're blushing the elbows or knees, depending on what limb you're working on. And then we're what, br blushing around the thigh, so close to that ring area of the leg. And then when it comes to the arms, of course, we're blushing the shoulder area. And along with the tips of the fingers, don't forget to blush the inside of the hands, the knuckles, and when it comes to the foot, don't forget to blush the little toes and the bottoms of the feet. Also, another thing I do not show is the face. I do not add any of this blushing color to the cheeks or anything like that, but I do apply it on top of the lip. So where we have the little indentation right on top of the lip. So that area, I'll definitely have to bring up a photo of, of Evangeline. So here we are. It's very, very subtle, but that area right on top of the lip has a little bit of that blushing. So make sure you add a little bit on there if you like it. If you don't, then you don't have to. I just wanted to let you guys know that this is something that I did off camera. It is in my notes, so <laughs> that's why I remember. Thank goodness for note taking. And yeah, so that's all I wanted to mention when it came to these the this part of blushing and now we are ready to do some head shading i hope you guys are ready for this so for this next part i do want to apologize because i do not show the full process of head shading so i do not realize that my phone dies in the middle of this process but i do have an ethnic baby that i am completing and when i get to this part I think I'm definitely gonna film that for you guys so you guys can get a better idea. But really, if you guys remember what the pink shading on the head, well, with the creasing color, the dark creasing color that we used earlier in the process, that is the color that we're using to shade over. So we're just creating a dark shaded area, as you guys can see. I'm also, along with creating or adding this color, I'm also, creating the hairline of the baby so that's something that's why it looks a little boxy and i don't mean it to look boxy um but that is about where the hairline is and it blends very nicely once you add uh, painted hair little tiny hairs and once the baby is rooted you definitely cannot see it but it is there i feel like it's an important important detail and i absolutely love it so this is me recording after charging my phone what the doll has or what the doll looks like i'm actually going to replay this clip so i can finish saying a few more details about this step so along with the head shading there are two other spots on the limbs of this baby that you will need to apply this color to in the same fashion so basically you're just coloring over so that is the knees and the elbows of the baby super super and as you guys can important. see the, this creates a very neutral tone on the knees and i know you can you guys cannot see the elbows but it's the same effect so it, it almost looks like whoa like okay the blushing totally goes with the ethnicity of this baby it's not just bang um, pink no like everything is tying together finally you guys are seeing the final steps and how truly Evangeline came to look the way she looked in person mm, it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful now the next detail again I don't show on camera but and that is brightening the detailing with yellows so what we're doing here is we're shading underneath the eyes we're shading the nose with this color yellow not necessarily shading but just applying this color to those areas to give and enhance the look of the baby's face and again i'm going to replay this short clip just so that i 
I can finish explaining here. So after you guys do brighten up those details with the yellow, so you're gonna do the yellow under the eyes and on the nose, you also wanna recrease your baby. I recrease my baby many, many times throughout the reborn process and that's how we create a dark effect versus trying to create that dark effect the first time around. I like to build up my color. It's the easiest and less stressful way to do it and um, I absolutely love it. And the other little detail that we've done is reveining her. So on top of the veining that already exists, I went over it again very, very lightly just to pop up those veins a little bit. And this is what we have. And as you guys have seen, I am comparing her to my skin tone to kind of give you an idea of how dark she is. She's not necessarily the same color of my skin. That, that was not my intention at all. But she uh, she's rosy. She's sweet. She's the perfect amount of yellow tone that I like in my babies. I love her veining. And she's just beautiful. Now... Are you guys ready to see the last step? Because this is the last step coming on, on this baby, and I'm about to cry. <laughs> so the last step is a dark color wash on the entire baby doll to tone down the yellow, even though I said I do, did do love the yellow tones on this baby. Apparently, in person, I wasn't that happy. <laughs> So I did one layer of the, our dark color, and that is Burnt Umber, Flesh O2, and Purple. Very thin, nothing like how we did it before. Um, and we're going to apply that to the entire kit to tone down the yellow. That's what my notes say, and I have to tell you guys that <laughs> because that is a process. So after that, you guys we are ready to seal this baby. If you're wondering where you should apply this color, again, just avoid the bottoms of the feet, the inside of the hands, avoid the lips, avoid the, that's it. That really is it. Go ahead and feel free to apply it everywhere else. So for our sealing, we're going to be using the Genesis Heat Set Paint Thinning Medium. And this is only applied to the head. And the reason that is, is because I still want to give the face, mainly the face of the baby, a natural glow. And in my experience with using thinning medium, I definitely get this beautiful glow. If you do not have thinning medium, you can definitely try using satin varnish. Just be careful because that satin varnish is definitely more um, illuminant, more glowing, I should say, than thinning medium. If you don't have thinning medium, I get my thinning medium from the Jerry's Artorama website. And it's only $13 for this big, <laughs> I believe it's four ounces. So that's a really great price. So Jerry's Artorama, I love to shop for my Genesis heat set paints from them. So I'll go ahead and let you guys watch the remaining of me applying this thinning medium to the head. Now when we move to the limbs, we're gonna do something a little bit different and I'll talk to you guys then.
Oh my goodness, look at that face, you guys. Oh my gosh, I miss her so much. She's adorable. Okay, so what I'm going to do is allow this to dry for about five minutes. You don't necessarily have to. You can go ahead and put the baby in the oven now, but I do like to let the head dry a little bit before I put it in the oven. That's just a personal preference. Nothing different really happens. That's just me. Okay, so now when we're going to do the, now for the limbs, we're actually going to use matte varnish, some thinner, and then we're going to add in our Genesis Heat Set Paints Thinning Medium. Now, the reason why I decide to do this is because I don't want my limbs to be as shiny or as glowing as the face. I want the limbs to be as matte and as neutral as possible. Now, if I apply direct matte, I notice that I, the, the limbs look very dull, very very dead very like oh my goodness they need that glow you know what i'm saying <laughs> so that's the reason why i add thinning medium because i don't necessarily am looking for the matte look i am looking for a matte look but with a little bit of glow not necessarily like shiny so if your baby is looking a little shiny you are adding too much thinning medium so that's how you kind of kind of measure yourself i should say but i've also noticed that every doll kit is different there are some doll kits that do not get shiny at all it's crazy and i'm not only adding this because um evangelina is shiny her fingertips are were very shiny i'm adding this also because it's a ceiling it's a sealer, I should say, and it'll seal my paint 100% as long as you cook this appropriately and we don't have any raw matte varnish or thinning medium on the baby, then the paint should not and will not come off. That has been my experience. This is why I like to seal at the end. So we seal the color in and we should have no, no issues at all. So yeah, so that is the magic mix. And now I'm going to apply it to the limbs. And again, you want to add this matte varnish everywhere on the kit. You want to get on those very, or in those very deep creases. Um, you want to get it everywhere on the baby.
So here is baby Evangeline in all of her beautiful glory. This is what the limbs look like after they have been sealed. Now, um, what I'm going to do next is eyebrows. Unfortunately, I do not do this on camera, but I will, have you let, I will let you guys know that I used the Prisma color pencils to do her eyebrows. Now, in this video here, now this is a replay. The eyebrows aren't very noticeable because I am working on them and after this I root her. So um, I do do several layers of this color pencil to add, create that depth, that realism. I believe a couple of you couldn't believe that the eyebrows were done with color pencil. So that is one thing about this baby. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful she looks. So this is after the doll show, you guys. This is once I returned home and I was getting ready for her to go home. So this is, I believe this is one of the video clips that I made of her on YouTube. So this is her rooted and everything. I also noticed after I finished rooting her before the doll show, I had not done her fingernails. So I do apologize that that is something that is not in this video. But if you have any problems with fingernail tipping, contact me and I will give you some advice. Um, the way that I do nail tipping is, is very, very easy, very simple, I think. I don't know. Um, I, you know what? I have to see if on YouTube I have a tutorial on this. It's been a while. I'm going to go check. I believe I do. And if I do, I will resend that link to you guys because the way that I do my nails has not changed. <laughs> so if I have a video, then it's how I do my nails now and I'll send that to you guys too. So anyway, guys, I thank you so much for continuing to listen to me talk. And, and yeah, love you guys so much and thank you for everything. Bye.